Yes, my cats put me in a cage. Not a mental cage, not an emotional cage, a real down-to-earth physical cage. They didn't force me in there with, you know, scratching and clawing. But they put me in there nonetheless. And in this video, I'm going to show it to you. I had a big problem. And although it might seem to you all that I spend all my time making cat videos, the reality is that I also have other hobbies, and one of them is painting. But it's hard to do art when you have cats. In fact, many hobbies are difficult when you have cats. They get in the way, they're curious, they want to know about what you're doing, they start messing with your stuff. Most cat owners know this. So for example, if I'm sitting at my desk typing something, they'll get on the back of the chair, then they'll eventually crawl down my arm, they'll get on the desk and they'll try to get on the, on the keyboard where I'm typing, eventually typing their own set of rather inscrutable letters. And if I'm in the workshop, they'll sit there and start looking at what I'm doing. Sometimes they'll poke around with the screws and the nails. As long as I'm not making a lot of loud noises, they hate loud noises. And if you have a hobby with a lot of little things, they get into those little things. I used to have a little container with paper clips on my desk. And once in a while, Sky would go up there and she'd start poking around with it and I would quickly let her know that was not acceptable. But the paper clips kept disappearing. And eventually, I found them all between sofa cushions. And I know it was Sky. She was taking them out of the little bowl and putting them in between the cushions. Why she did that, I have no idea. If you make puzzles, for example, they'll sit on the puzzle, they'll start messing with your pieces, they'll mess up the color piles, and in the worst situation, they'll take one of the pieces, hide it, or smack it down under something. But I had a different problem. Wet paint. Wet paint is the worst. And if the cats got into the wet paint, they could, number one, poison themselves by licking it off of themselves after they got it on. And number two, spread it around the house because they start to rub up against everything. That's the way cats are. They rub up against to, uh, things to put their scent on them. And then I have to clean everything up. I know this is a possibility because when I used to live in an apartment, at that time I didn't have cats because the landlord wouldn't allow it, but I would leave paintings on the floor to dry. And uh, one time I just had put a wash on a painting and the next morning I see little tracks on it. It wasn't a cat because I didn't have any, but it were, they were tracks of a mouse. I had mice and they left their little tracks on the painting and they left tracks all over the apartment. The last thing I want is cat tracks on my paintings or on my floors. So I decided that I needed a space that the cats cannot get into a space that I could work in and a space where I could leave paintings to dry without worry that the cats were gonna get into them. And the result is this big cage that I have put in my back room. Now, I didn't wanna close off the room altogether because it's one of their favorite rooms. It is where they sit to get the afternoon sun. And it also has a window that I want to eventually use for access to a catio that I'm gonna put in the yard. And in addition, it has a litter box, which is the only good place in the first floor that of my house that I could put a litter box in. So I put in this barrier that looks like a cage. In fact, it is a cage uh, where I carved out a little area for them to be able to access the window. Some of you might have seen it in other videos that I have uh, at least part of it and been wondering what it is. And hopefully this video is gonna be a little bit helpful to you uh, for some of the problems that you might have with your cats. My name is Francisco and on this channel I work with my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall and Mr. Muffin, to help you improve the lives of your cats. Now this uh, cage was not very difficult to build. I uh, put in a frame which I screwed to the studs in the wall on, the, on each side and then I built two panels, one of them on hinges so that it acts as a door and it can open and shut. The door has a latch so that the cats can't just push it and there's a locking latch in case they decide to try to mess with it. Now I can sit in there and do whatever work I need to do without uh, the, the cats getting underfoot and also leave the paintings to dry. Now I know that some of you live in apartments because I used to live in one or rent and you don't have the capacity to build something like this because your landlord won't allow it 
or you can't damage the walls. So I'm gonna have some tips for you later on in the video. Now, this cage is not perfect. The cats will sit outside the cage looking in and start meowing and crying trying to get in. Now, this is annoying, uh, especially if I'm trying to concentrate, but it's less annoying than having to take them to the vet to get their stomachs pumped out because they ate some paint, and it's less annoying uh, uh, than trying to clean the paint off of everything if they spread it around. There's also a lot of cat hair because they do go into this room. It's always floating around. I know that if I ever become a famous artist, they're gonna be able to tell the real paintings from the forgeries by seeing if there's cat hair embedded in the paint. They will look at each painting and say, oh yeah, this was his cat period. I can see the fur of Mr. Muffin in it. <laughs> okay, so what do you do if you can't build a large cat cage, which I realize that many of you are in that situation. Uh, one of the things you could do is consider a small cage. Maybe there is a way to build something small that you can actually keep your paintings into drying and work in a separate room with the door closed while the cats scratch on the outside. Another possibility is if you have a closet that doesn't have too many things in it to move those things somewhere else. I know that a lot of you are going to think, what? A closet that doesn't have too many things in it? Um, but if that is the case, it's a possibility. Uh, I emptied out this closet just to show you that it is possible. And it, with some shelves in here, you can use it to store paintings as they dry, which really is the most important part of the whole process. What if you don't have any extra closets? One, another possibility is a trunk like this one. This trunk uh, is pretty big and I can put a painting in here to dry. I could put a puzzle in if I wanted to keep it from getting messed with. Sewing things, other types of hobbies with small pieces could be put in this kind of um, trunk while you're not using them. And if none of these solutions work for you, you tr could try getting to the root of the problem, which is boredom. Indoor cats are bored because they don't have all the natural stimulation that they get outside. And eventually they get very familiar with the inside of our houses and anything new, anything different, anything that you're paying attention to becomes interesting to them. So they entertain themselves by messing with your stuff. The more entertained they are, the less likely they are to get into your things. Now, it's not a perfect solution, but it's gonna just give them more activities to do besides getting into your hobby. So here are some tips. One, make sure that they have access to windows. Windows are great entertainment for them. Just, to, just put in little shelves, make sure that there's little tables, something that they can actually see out the window as easily as possible. I have a video about windows, which I will link down below. Another possibility is to give them things to climb, and I mean beyond the scratching post and your drapes. I, for example, built them the Skyway, which you see behind me, and I will put a link on that uh, also below to the video I made. Give them more playtime. The more they play, the more tired they're going to be, and less likely they are going to be into your things. A tired cat is a lazy cat. Give them new stuff to explore. And I don't necessarily mean buying a lot of toys. It can be as simple as when you get back from the store, leave the bag on the floor and let them play with it. When you get an Amazon box or something, uh, some kind of delivery, leave the bag, the box on the floor for a couple of days. Let them play with it. Let them toy with it. Anything that's different is going to be interesting and entertaining to them. Or it can be super cheap, like balloons. Blowing up some balloons and leaving them on the floor so that they can play around with them for a couple of days. You could also try something a little more radical. Take one of your pieces of furniture and move it. Put it somewhere that's different for them. They'll come around, they'll start poking around, they'll look at it, they'll smell it, they'll wonder why it's moved. Now, this might cause stress to some cats because they don't like change. But I don't think that all stress is bad stress. Some stress is actually invigorating. Think of a roller coaster. Also consider getting a second cat if you only have one. They will entertain each other. Now this could be a double-edged sword because you might end up with two cats getting into your stuff rather than just one. But if you do decide to get a second cat, make sure to introduce them the proper way. And the best way to do that is a slow introduction. I have a video that I will link right here about how to do exactly just that. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it and share it. And I will see you in the next one.